Now it's time for questions, and uh, I just want to thank you, all the three of you, that uh, you agreed to to uh, work and think about the the proposition we made, uh, uh, in which we try to shift uh, attention from West and East contacts to to what's happening within within this. If if we dare to say area, but I think what, what can make it more and different from what Boris described as area studies, kind of compartmentalization of the world from an outside point of view, is exactly the borders and the hybrid uh, forms of, of exchanges that are within. So the translations that were also needed within the region and that can uh, make it uh, much more exciting and uh, heterogeneous uh, from our point of view who live here. So um, thanks a lot because you really took this uh, kind of question seriously, but now it's, it's uh, also the opportunity for the audience and uh, Andras Edith already has a, a question <laughs> or a comment or so on. If I may, I would rather comment, not question. So I would like to get back to the notion of region from a different point of view. I do find that this is quite a tricky notion because, for example, I, I absolutely agree with Boris with the, I, uh, that it is ideologically charged. But at the same time, for example, if we go back to the bike, Balkan hype, I have seen all the exhibition also, that... Um, it could be conceived differently as, for example, the guilty feeling of the West because of the war and their involvement. And also, it, uh, it showed, the, showed the symptom of uh, organizing sub-regions. So while it was an entitlement, at the same time, it was a sub-region within the once conceived very homogeneous region. And uh, I would say that, uh, that uh, we, we should not uh, throw out the baby with the basin, uh, the baby with the basin water because, for example, we can use it as a tool as well, as, uh, as a strategic essentialism. And, uh, for example, when Piotrowski figured out the horizontal concept of horizontal art history, he had this very strong fear that the region which has this layered history, this very sophisticated, nuanced art, which we are here about here, will be totally lost in the new universalism and named world art history or global art history, and will be totally flattened out and simplified actually by those postdocs or even full professors who are now invited to the CNN comments coming from the area of studies. Now they are absolutely established professors. So what, uh, what I would propose, and I agree with my young colleague, Rodek, that what can we do with it? So how, how can we use it? And we have, I believe, two options. One of them is if keeping the notion, but not treating it very rigidly, but for example, uh, considering or drawing the, uh, the borders as very fluid or changing. So within, within this, within the regionalism, we can use as a methodology this transnationalism and even in a bigger perspective, transregionalism. The other perspective is, uh, which I'm very fond of uh, to deal with it, that replacing geopolitics with chronopolitics because even those borders are moving very fast, as we can see now in connection to Ukraine. So this is, uh, yeah, this is it. Maybe, um, uh, actually, very shortly, uh, 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 respond uh, uh, in, in terms of not to be uh, misunderstood, uh, uh, this, my point was not simply to scrap the idea of regions, but rather to try to think it differently. Uh, first of all, in cutting this uh, umbilical cord between territory and the so-called identity, and having in mind the, the, the uh, uh, violent act of bordering, 
which is intrinsic. And having this in mind means to uh, constantly self-critically question the idea of, of region. Uh, since the concept of region cannot escape the problem of bordering, it should think of terms in terms of bordering, uh, 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 the border in, in completely different, different terms as a, as a, a constant process of <laughs> critical <laughs> negotiation, which includes transfer. Um, and I fully agree that it opposes the concept of post-sovereign nation states. Our nation states are not sovereign since there is no economic sovereignty. So it is, it is already <laughs> the story of a sovereign nation state is over. And in fact, there is nothing left except the regions, but uh, European Union, uh, for instance, in terms of uh, lingu its linguistic policies, uh, uh, wanted to create some idea of region, but it failed. Original, uh, the, the linguistic politics uh, of the European Union, and it even had a, com a commissar for languages. And the original idea was that every European should learn three languages. One is, of course, the mother tongue, the second is English, and the language of the neighbor. Of course, uh, because of the hierarchies, and we know these hierarchies, it has failed because Poles, uh, Czechs learn German, Slovenians learn Italian, but never the other way around. So we have to deal with the hierarchies and be aware that region should also be conceived in terms of challenging these hierarchies. Uh, and I would, to your dichotomies, which are really productive and remind us of of what is happening uh, here, add another one, and I mentioned it, this rapid revernacularization of our languages and cultures and uh, hegemony uh, that, that, that creates, which is now not only Western <laughs> uh, history of art. I participated in MoMA's uh, writing of the history of Eastern European art, of, of course. And, uh, at, at that time in MoMA, it was clear, they divided the world. You know, the idea is, let's write the history of contemporary art, and the world was divided according to, to areas, uh, uh, according to area studies. And it was East European and West European art. <laughs> they, they did it simply followed, and you, you, uh, uh, there is a, such a huge money behind, and, and, and uh, machinery that produces it, you, you cannot simply oppose and say critically, send a letter to be <laughs> published <laughs> there uh, of, of, of critique. So I would use this notion of a, a new vernaculars, uh, languages, <laughs> lang linguistic praxis, cultural exchange, and uh, 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 that, you know, this is between this, this order, the world of order and all these dichotomic notions you have, you have mentioned that, that, that uh, 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 oppose, that oppose what is official, what is state, what is, uh, what is hegemony, etc., etc. So uh, I don't have time to, to, to uh, uh, go deeper into it, but you know, vernacular uh, is a, these are the languages before they, they were, they were called vernacular, before they were raised into national standardized languages. Uh, and it, in these terms, it means uh, simply a spaces of a different continuities, not <laughs> you know, this uh, time space of, uh, I don't know, Eastern Europe or Central Eastern Europe, but of certain wild uh, 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 continuities that cannot be enclosed in a clearly bounded space, enclosed, enclosed space. So, uh, but, okay, we might discuss, and I should develop the, the concept of, of vernacular, vernacular histories, or including also art histories in, in the future. But to my colleagues uh, to also respond then. <clears throat> Uh, I want to I want to thank uh, thank Edith for her uh, contribution and uh, I mean not just uh, with this question but for her like really 
uh, deep contribution to uh, theorization of uh, uh, Eastern European uh, art in a broader in a broader context and uh, like also long dialogue uh, in on a different uh, meeting points uh, of I mean stemming from uh, as you said 90s to today and uh, I think um, um, I, I partly I partly agree with uh, with your criticism or maybe with your with your um, uh, wondering of, uh, I mean, what do we do? How do we, how do we actually uh, discuss this? And I think uh, that um, uh, the um, fluidity, um, instability um, of a position that we um, took into consideration, speaking about the cultural transfer. Uh, it all that, it, that this fluidity also assumes. Uh, the uh, context from which we are speaking about. So if, if it is, uh, if uh, now we speak in, a, uh, now we speak about cultural context, uh, contacts uh, between the East and East, so East-East transfers, and I think that in this uh, situation, this is the opportunity for us also to reflect upon and to be uh, self-critical in our, uh, use of uh, uh, uses of these notions and uh, push ourselves to maybe um, invent some other uh, some other notions or some other definitions uh, and uh, I think it is the right place to 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 do so to pose such such questions without uh, the fear that uh, uh, we will fall uh, into uh, as an invisible invisibles invisibles within a uh, some kind of uh, field of flattening uh, universality. Uh, well, perhaps. Uh, uh, if we are in the in the in the uh, ultimately uh, global, uh, if we are speaking in an ultimately global uh, context, which is somehow uh, flattening and uh, which is uh, in this level of uh, hierarchies that uh, Boris mentioned now, referring to also MoMA. So if it is really made from this like position uh, from above. Uh, we should uh, insist uh, on uh, uh, maybe this particularity uh, and think of, uh, uh, I would say, beyond, uh, beyond identity, but also uh, with uh, uh, accepting and resuming and insisting on uh, particularities, but uh, the ones which are, uh, which are I would say, uh, confrontational. So, uh, yeah, maybe this, maybe this is uh, one of the uh, uh, possibilities to to think about the definitely uh, quite contradictory uh, field uh, we are dealing with, uh, where it is not so easy to take a stand. Okay, uh, if I could answer to add it, uh, first of all, I hope I have not misquoted you. <laughs> and that I have more or less uh, understood you properly uh, when you said that the momentum for regionalism is simply gone. So um, I think that the greatest achievement of uh, like horizontal art history is the focus on local specificity, yes? But it's a kind of weakness also, which we kind of uh, have been uh, learning about more and more in recent years. So the danger is to succumb into this uh, nationalist uh, discourse and things like that. So the task is to uh, somehow uh, uh, save this uh, focus on local specificity and to connect it like translocally to other places, to other uh, localities, to other histories and so on and so on. And that's why I liked your idea of uh, uh, returning in a way, but in a new way, to the question and to the notion of the universal, but uh, again, to, to uh, respond to Boris, the uh, example that you quoted, uh, 
the universal uh, rights of men, males, and then we've got uh, women who demand to be included in the universal, and we could also um, um, like refer to Susan Buck Morris, the question of Hegel and Haiti. We've got French Revolution and the Enlightenment ideas of you know freedom, etc., etc., and we've got Haiti slaves who took very seriously those very uh, ideas and demanded to be included in the notion of the uh, rights of a man. So um, uh, the, the local specificity should be uh, uh, negotiated into and included into the universal and we could have like another uh, uh, philosophical discussion on the question of the so-called concrete universal that has many instances that has many forms etc etc so uh, this is the hmm, direction i think we should uh, uh, be going uh, uh, into but uh, uh, it's easier said than done so we are still waiting to have such pluriversal art histories to be written and you know the the, the very notions that i uh, um, quoted the pluriversal or singuversal are just uh, um, like catchwords like you know watchwords like uh, empty notions so far i believe so we must come with content for them and you know practice art history If no one else, I just, yeah, okay. Yeah. Sorry. I just wanted to uh, really briefly um, uh, respond to uh, uh, Tomasz's presentation, and uh, I'm really delighted with that. I must say that uh, we were talking like, since like regions are so ideologically laden, what is the solution? And uh, Tomasz's presentation already comes up with the solution, and what I really like is this two uh, complementary two perspectives. So one is a kind of symptomatology in kind of Nietzschean sense. So, you know, rather than plotting cultural transfer on this like either west or east, it's rather uh, a kind of reading the symptoms um, of a nuanced kind of phenomenon. And I really like your case study of uh, the labyrinth gallery uh, in Lublin and um, like the second element in the mix that I think is really compelling is what you uh, are constructing here the notion of pluritechnics uh, sorry pluritechnics pluri pluriversalism um, uh, because it um, as you rightly mentioned is it does away some of the problems of the so-called local uh, specificity um, Perhaps, you know, what you're doing uh, for me, uh, I would contextualize in the parallel developments in um, decolonial theory. So on the one hand, Eduardo Viveros de Castro is talking about multinaturalism, but this is uh, critiqued uh, from the point of view of philosophy of techniques by um, um, Chinese scholar Yu Kui. Um, who says that, you know, there's a still assumes the question of nature, which is problematic because then it it has the notion of, you know, a kind of nativism or something. Uh, but uh, he has this concept which is called uh, cosmotechnics, saying that uh, technicity and art is technicity is predicated on a specific vision of uh, cosmology. And of course, there are plural cosmologies. So it's a kind of dialogue with Heidegger for whom you know the cybernetics was was the end of uh, philosophy, and you know he tried to return to the Greeks um, as this return to this original techniques. But Yukwe is saying that there are many um, different visions of the cosmos which are underlying all technical activity, which includes artistic activity. So I suppose that could be something really interesting because it also does away with the concept of nature. And I don't think, um, you know, in the context of planetarization of technology in the Anthropocene, I don't think, you know, it's easy to defend the concept of nature anymore. So perhaps, you know, Yukwe could be your ally in developing your project. So. Uh, thank you for your appreciation of my paper. And um, 
uh, if I had time, I would probably refer to some of the post-colonial thinkers to, to kind of rework what they propose in order to apply it to our context. Yeah, so uh, I had like one nice quotation on this pl pl pluriversalism that it is supposed to be like a horizontal open dialogue between different epistemies something like that, which would fit very much, and it, w it would kind of uh, echo Piotrowski's horizontal art history as th this kind of open dialogue. Maybe uh, not the best idea, but uh, uh, like interaction or, or relations, something like that. So definitely, uh, there is something to be learned from those contexts. Is there anyone else? Um, if not, I just would like to add briefly that it was really inspiring, as you said, that it's, it's something that we should turn into practice, all, all these considerations that, and, and terms and dichotomies and matrix of dich dichotomies. And I just wanted to uh, stress that, that what, what you already started to do in connection with the Galeria Labyrinth and as Jelena described, this, this kind of very interesting uh, uh, interconnection between the, the Paris Biennale of Young Artists and, and the research visits of, of Yesha de Negri and how um, material conditions also affected uh, uh, transfers and... and um, and this, this idea of, of uh, interpreting art within society, but not as a kind of um, um, derivative of, of uh, ideologies, I think it's, it's all kind of very inspiring. And, and in this project, we really would like to, to do this kind of practical part and, and uh, identify case studies that could be uh, discussed together, so not like from one national or from, from one linguistic perspective. So um, I, I ask again if there's any other comment or uh, question. And if not, uh, we can uh, uh, head over for the lunch. And uh, I, I also suggest if you have any ideas that you couldn't share now that, that we'll have uh, probably more relaxed and longer discussions after each uh, following session and one longer at the end of the conference where we can connect all these threads and ideas. So thanks a lot for your attention and also for all these three uh, very, very integruing integru integru <laughs> integru papers, sorry. And, uh, and uh, let's, let's meet uh, in one hour's time uh, here again uh, to um, continue with session two. Thank you. <laughs>